after watching you at New Japan, I think we are seeing a newer, better version of Mr. Nick Nemeth. What do you think about that? You based all of that on me wearing a suit? Um, <laughs> that's fine. No, no, no. Uh, I, I mean, I've, been, I've had a very fortunate career. I was very lucky. Uh, almost 20 straight years in one company, and now it's a chance just to just uh, see what else is out there and try a few other things out. So I hate sitting at home. I cannot stand it. Uh, even in between WWE loops, two or three days, I start getting antsy. I want to get out of here. So the last three, six, eight, ten months, I have been training twice a day, making all these different adjustments, just getting ready to go. Okay, at some point, you go back to full-on proving yourself all over again. And uh, you better be ready to go and not just sitting at home, sipping my ties in the backyard, which I did for a little while. Uh, but still, it was be ready to go no matter what. So there's no issues. There's no people. Oh, he's protected or he sat around loafing around. Nope. I did everything I can to be ready to go, and I'm still in the middle of it right now. I feel uh, that I'm in the best shape of my life, and not just how people say that, like, oh, yeah, I got divorced, and I'm in, the, I'm doing the best of my life ever, and you're crying in a corner. I, I have, I'm, was waiting for a moment to get going and make myself get slapped in the face again and go, remember the stuff you did all the time? You can't wait to do it now uh, uh, on a different stage and man i cannot wait nick uh nick. the line in the song goes i'm young running free i just want to concentrate on that word free for yeah. one second how does it feel to be free of a company that you worked for for so long and when did that feeling of freedom hit you did it hit you the minute you hung up the phone with them or did it hit you weeks or months later uh it, it's weird because um it, it was I was preparing, you know, for the last six, eight, 10 months going at some point, I have to make a change here. So as you get ready to go and you see that you don't have a chance to be in a pay-per-view match and steal the show, you don't have a chance to have a six minute match and steal the show. You have a match where at this point it's three minutes and you don't get an entrance on the show and everybody knows who's winning the match on the show. And you know, can I find a way to have that work? And then once that started happening, uh, I mean, that even a couple of years ago, uh, when Rude and I were tagging, we'd have three or four or five minute matches. So I was starting to think like, hey, man, at some point I need to be back, ready to go. Will my shape and stamina still be there? So I've been preparing for this so long and getting things ready to go that I, uh, I wasn't like, what? What do I do now? Like, holy, I'm free or whatever. Like it was, I was planning this along for the, uh, half of this entire last contract with WWE going, I know at some point uh, I am being paid way too much money to sit at home. So I'm going to have to get out of here. So I just wanted to always be ready to go just in case they said, Hey, by the way, I know you've been doing 90 second matches. Can you do 35 minutes on TV with the undertaker? You're damn right. I can. So I was ready to go anyway. I just wanted to have every option available. And it's, so it was so it wasn't out of the blue and it was, I had sent a few emails to the boss for the last six months definitively saying, I have to move on somewhere else. Can you let me do this? And eventually without uh, exact back and forth, that's how it worked out. So it wasn't weird uh, because it was so six to eight, 10 months in place for me going, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Okay, great. Now I have 90 days of sitting around, which is going to break my heart but I got to do it and I'll just take up the uh, extra workouts and everything like that. Nick, we know who you are on this show. And there's very few people in the world of pro wrestling that you can plug and play against any talent from the top of the card to the greenest guy that you can imagine. And that's you. You, you're, you're a master, a savant, an expert um, at your craft. And the easy, you and Randy Orton are the two easiest people I ever, I ever worked with. And on top and in the mid. Um, did you ever feel a sense of lack of confidence in, so the, in, the, in the process? 
Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, and and every man all the time. Uh, I, I was uh, I think I'm on year twenty of is every gonna everybody gonna find out that I'm a big phony and I don't know what the hell I'm doing because you don't have that confidence sometimes. But every three four years. I go back and go, man, I stole the show in this match, me and John Morrison. Oh, man. And you go back and look at it. And I go, I'm so embarrassed at like waiting somewhere and not waiting somewhere. And I'm watching me. And then three more years goes by, world champion, stealing shows. I go back and watch those two, three years later. And I go, oh, my God, how could I be so bad at this? But it's we're all our harshest critics. I totally understand that. But there is that day every couple of every couple of years w w without having to look back where I would readjust and go, this is, this is C minus work when I thought it was an A and it just makes you keep going and going. Now the last six, eight months to where I'm not used to that 25, 30 minute match time. I started saying, can I still go? Can I do everything? And it's, it's knowing that in your back pocket that everything that you worked up for, is just slowly ready to go at all points and all times. And it helps when you have 18, 19 years, you have it in your back pocket that you can always just, when this situation arises, boom, I can go here. Somebody's shoulder came out of place in this match. Don't worry. I got it. We go here. And then you continue on and do things like that. It just, it's almost like it's stand up comedy. If you get 15,000 reps in, you start to have things in your back pocket. You start to figure out what you're uh, just how the story that you're telling is, even if, you lose the crowd for a second or somebody, something happens here. And it really is a, a, like a unique set of skills that several people have. But I feel like I have been, I have been someone who, like you said, could be plugged in it. There was no need to add Randy in here. He's getting his praises every F and day. So F him. So there was the thing where it's like, Jesus, everyone's like, you're so good. You're so good. And Randy, he's going to be just fine. F him. So like, <laughs> like, let's talk about me. Like, Hey, you know what? Randy, let's bring it back to me. Yeah. Come on. What the hell? Like, hey, this is a great interview with you. Can you give me Randy's <laughs> autograph? Like that's fine. Um, <laughs> there is an extent where, of course we all love, well, love him. I can't stand Randy, but like, we love how good he is at his job and it like actually makes me very angry and also makes him very angry that I'm good at my job. So it's just, you find a way, like you forget sometimes when you're like, Hey, I haven't won a match in two and a half years. Am I good at this job? Why am I here? Why are these millions of dollars coming into my, my house for me to have a 30 second match? With, and you go, don't worry. There's a reason it's still there because if something happens, you are always the break glass in case, and bring you in there. And it, it's happened several times in the past. I've been Bully very said it to make it happen. Bully said that about you. You're the in case of emergency break glass guy. Yeah. So I feel <laughs> like, the, the, especially the last two, three, four years, it was uh, I'm Ozzie Smith sitting on the bench. And if you need a shortstop, I save the game at shortstop. If you need a closing pitcher to make it happen. If you need somebody to catch, if you need somebody in center field. And clearly, uh, I look like I can play all those positions too. So there we do. Do you? Um, yeah, James. Yeah, you know what this is? I do. Oh my yes. god! Yes, I've been I waiting do. my turn. I'm so happy to see you. I'm so excited for you, actually, because I obviously was there with you. Well, when I was there, I was there with you. Um, and so I know, and I can understand how it feels to be like feel like you're so damn good, and you've been good for a very, very long time. Like I could, I would say that you're probably one of the best wrestlers in the world right now. I really believe that you're so good at what you do. No doubt. But I think. You get a chance now. Every door is wide open for you, right? Like, so anything that you want to do and then the potential to see all these matchups against different people out there, um, it's just going to be crazy. And I think the wrestling world is going to go nuts. And I'm excited for you. And I'm excited for you because, like, when Bully said freedom, you now have the freedom to kind of do exactly what you want and to paint that picture exactly how you want to paint it. And now you have time to work more on your stand-up. You know, and if you need, why do jokes, I need to work on it more, Mickey? Well, because if why? you need jokes, I have so many, right? <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's it don't work like that. Oh, <laughs> that's going to be a part of his act now. <laughs> that's going to be a part of the act. Oh. No, no, no. I, I uh, James, uh, just I just love, love it you. when people I've known give you for twenty you jokes. years, <laughs> and it's and it's and it's. I appreciate the nice thing you said, but it is true. It's like you can. I was just so used to. Uh, I've only. I didn't know independence before this. I came to WWE after wrestling in college. And right. uh, 
So I've only known this system. I've known, and it was like, and also you get a little spoiled, like, oh, you're you open an email and you and you go to the airport and everything's taken care of. So okay. now it is an right. absolutely very much different thing, and uh, it becomes your 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 working for yourself, but also you're picking your schedule. And yes, there's, there's matchups out there and there's different things. And I go, just, just from, uh, uh, surprising everybody, I hope we kept a great secret. I thought showing up in Japan and then, and then in a world where the internet is 99% negative in a world where wrestling fans on the internet are 99.9% negative. I got very solid feedback, not just like, Hey, I like you or you suck. Like it was, Hey, this is cool to see you in a different environment. Oh, I see. Now we can have this matchup. Maybe this thing can happen because of X and Y. And it makes you really want, you're like, man, you know what? I still have this. I, I feel like I'm 25 years old. Um, I've had this unbelievable career and I don't mean uh, titles. I mean, I've missed like three weeks of work in 19 and a half years. And two of those weeks was just told, let's let's be careful and play it safe. So I have this insane, uh, well, skin care routine, Mickey, as you know. <laughs> and then also I'm somehow, my body is ready for this. I think because of the way I trained for college wrestling at Kent State and St. Ed's, that I have this stamina, I have the, the muscular structure to where somehow maybe that has really helped me stay healthy all these years also. And it's just so funny to me. And it's like, yeah, you're, uh, so many positive comments. It was so funny. And then it would just be like, man, Daniel Bryan, he, he's so good. He's like the best in the world. Dolph, uh, 10 years ago, maybe he's probably washed up. And I go, I look like a million bucks. I don't, I, I'm so good at like making things happen, no matter what, whether it's two minutes or 20 minutes. And I go, man, I don't care what other people say, but I'm really looking forward to going, the things I do behind the scenes or in the ring that I have the last 20 years to eat bringing that to several different places and uh, maybe even as like a hired gun bouncing around and just saying, here's what I pitched to WWE 20 years ago for me to be the modern day Ric Flair who shows up in a territory and makes something happen and d steals the show with their champ without even knowing who the hell he is and then moves on to the next town. So hopefully something like that, uh, which I've been really looking forward to for a long time. Yeah. Nick, the yes. only thing better than being Great is proving it. Damn. You get the opportunity to tell the motherfucker it to their face. Follow that. Yeah. I'll see y'all at the next show. <laughs> you don't get you haven't got to do that in a while. It, it's been a while so since now I very angrily I came oh. backstage and threw a chair and said, follow that, MFers. Yeah, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> the, th th yeah. the thing that sucks is I've seen you have those matches. Those follow yeah. that matches and it just fall on deaf ears. Back in the day, if you could have matches like Dolph had, you got pushed to the moon. But if they don't have the idea to push you to the moon now, you could have any, you could have your five star, six star match and it doesn't matter. Uh, Do uh, Nick, my real question was this. Um, uh, did you, did, was it a dream of yours to work in Japan? And what was it like being in a Japanese locker room for the first time? Uh, so, two different ways i uh was thinking about that for a long time get, going different places for the last few years especially focusing on like hey what do i want to do for the next move here and that's been for the, a few years working on a plan and i go first and foremost i've heard so many different things from ambrose and all these different guys about how you need to see what this locker room's like you need to see what it feels like to be there and i go man I wonder if I, I'm a, can, can I adapt to this? I feel like I can adapt to anything. Can I? So you do a little homework and you bounce around and you go, man, this would be something really special. One, I've made a, a, a career out of famously saying, I don't watch wrestling. I hate it. All these different things. And I, it's usually a joke, but um, I just hated what I was doing. You know, they couldn't really critique it at home. So I go, I hate wrestling, blah, blah, blah. But then you get a moment where you go, I can, one, be a part of something special, but two, see in a, a completely different environment, not just go to a different state and wrestle and go to a different company in the United States to expand and go, I feel like I can do everything here. Now I'm going to start over other places. Can I start from the bottom or the middle and recreate it? Almost like a Twilight Zone where the guy wants to go back in time and go, can I remake my fortune can i remake my career 
on a, in a different level on a 2.0 scale. And uh, I really thought a- after laying into, no, I don't watch wrestling. I don't care. I'm retired that I feel like and going above and beyond to secretly get to Japan and put this all in place and just getting there and walking into the locker room and knowing two or three faces, which really helped because I was really going somewhere. I brought my brother with me and uh, where I didn't know people, I didn't know what was like, am I welcome in this locker room? Am I uh, a scumbag to these guys? Am I someone who's okay? Can I earn my way into this locker room? What, are, what What's the situation? And it, it was, we, it was so weird, but fun because you see a couple of faces. You're like, oh, okay. And you feel like, okay, I'm kind of at home. I'm not accepted yet. How can I get accepted? What can I do to prove that I want to be here, not for myself, but to help to make the show better, to make the company better, to make more eyes come on this. Can I help out? And you really start to think that you can and you, and you watch. And uh, I really got to watch closely uh, a lot of that entire card and some of it uh, from the front row, which was really fun. And just watching it in person, I go, okay, this is different. This is special. I can go with this. Oh, I can do something with this guy. This guy here, I go, oh, I could really see this aspect of me going here and maybe making things happen and walking. And since I was a surprise, I didn't get a chance to walk around in the arena a couple hours before. I go, whoa, this is a big effing deal. I was hidden in the back. And when I, um, my brother and I walked out, I went, oh my God, this is not just another level, a different situation. This is, this is big. This is huge. And I got little shivers down the back of my neck here. And I went, man, this can be something so special. I'm going to, I'm going to do what I can to make that happen. You know, you know, Nick, and by the way, that Twilight Zone episode you're talking about is from season. Is all of them. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, but Nick, um, you know, one of the greatest moments I experienced as a fan was the night that you cashed in the money in the bank at the uh, uh, Brenda Byrne Arena at the Meadowlands. Well, that's because um, you're a mark. But and and I and I always say kidding. I am. No, I I'm am so, a mark. You I was know? gonna say but it's mark, but I didn't know the swearing rules. But it, but it's but I'm, it's worked out for me. Too. I have the number one show on Sirius XM. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so aggressive. But 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 Nick, yeah. you know, you had that moment. You cash in. You had twenty thousand fans cheering for you when you were a heel. By the way, when you're ca- when you made that money in the bank cash in, like when when was the transition that happened where you are that top guy and everybody's behind you to becoming like you said that utility player? When did that transition happen for you? Uh, it really. Uh, I'll make a joke here first. It didn't happen. It was there's the moment, and then the first defense I, I lost. Uh, so. And that's, I'm not even referring to the title match, like just the first day back to wrestling, uh, losing matches. So it wasn't there that way, but there is that aspect of it's real to me and others. And then sometimes it's even more real. And uh, I never really talk about this part as much as that moment's awesome. I will never forget it. Uh, My entire body had shivers running down it, walking down to this match because I, I, again, it happens to all of us to where you go, does anyone give a damn what I'm doing? Is this, does this matter? I know in my head, oh, it's all I think about all day. Does anyone else give a damn about this guy who loses 95% of the time is a bad guy and is cash or cashing in a chance to beat up a guy who is holding his leg and ri- riling on the ground who just wrestled an entire match. And you go, all these aspects make no sense. But in that moment, there was a time of, the crowd was what kept me going. And I think nobody mentions this ever. There's got to be a bunch of different times where even the office was probably like, okay, enough of teasing this guy. We got to move on and go to somewhere else. But the crowd would be cheering the heel in the match. Who's not doing cool shit and like making the baby look bad, but is getting his ass kicked. But to a point to where, they know the work is there and they see the movement and the fluid motion and they know the story and they see everything that happens. They go, I know this is going to be a great match or a great moment. So because of that continued outburst from the crowd to where they're cheering heels on television, not heels, one heel. And it really, that the crowd did that. The crowd made that happen. They all talk about Daniel Bryan stuff. That's great. I didn't have a catchphrase, whatever. I, I don't want one. I don't care. There was this, they kept it going 
even if I was on TV for a couple of minutes that day or not having something special, the cheers and the response got me the chance to get the briefcase and then to get a chance, I go, man, am I going to be the first guy that doesn't cash in or loses it? If I had a guess at that point, hell yeah, I'd be that guy. And then uh, because of the special, uh, I had a great chemistry with Del Rio and we, we put together a beautiful two and a half minutes uh, that I'm so proud of because knowing the ins and outs and behind the scenes work of WWE, I'm like we can get these people drawn in. I can tell a story with it with him being injured and me being injured and me being someone who never gets a chance to go all the way to the top and become champ. I go, it was just this beautiful brewing story because of intermeshing, you know, reality and the television show that we're on. So I, it, it became this beautiful moment that I could never possibly forget. And as much as I say that I'm good and you guys are get, saying such nice things, the audience made that moment happen and without them, it doesn't. Nick, you 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 mentioned your brother, and uh, and you also mentioned your college career. Um, I've seen you multiple times um, use some of your your amateur background, and you went away from it for a lot of years. Uh, is there a chance that we'll get to see some of your uh, some of your amateur uh, wrestling again? Uh, absolutely. Uh, he, and uh, Aaron Anderson used to yell at me for not putting it in there enough. And I was always there, there's it's this slippery slope of. I'm a shooter, what we call, because I wrestled grade school, high school, college, but also I was so focused on the sports entertainment aspect that I would be like, well, I don't want people to think of me as a wrestler. I'm trying to be the, a number one guy in WWE. So I would get away from it sometimes, but then Arn was so insistent on it. Uh, IRS too. So many, so many different guys, uh, Dean, so many different people would be like, you gotta, it's what makes you stand out, especially when I'm a foot shorter than a lot of other guys, you can get some things in. And the last, so that was on me for a few years. So I would make sure to incorporate it and it makes things stand out. And especially now like, going to Japan, I really look forward to someone being able to retaliate that back to me and be able to go and make a, a different ma matches look differently than they would have in WWE, even like a Daniel Bryan style match. Like him and I had a bunch in WWE, but it would be very different in this aspect. Uh, but of course um, in, in a non-negative way, several years of it was, well, we just lost three minutes in your four minute segment. Can you ditch all your shit? And they go, yeah, okay, let's get to the pro wrestling. So a, a lot of it was me forgetting that every once in a while, but several aspects was uh, the last five, six, seven years was we have 90 seconds till break. We don't have time for your shit. So, okay, I'll make something else happen. But yes, man, I can't like, I was looking for in that locker room in Japan going, who the hell can roll around here with me? And we could go and kind of, crack each other in the face and try and make each other tap out. I look forward to it. Oh my yeah. God. That's exciting. Like, That's oh, so yeah, exciting. I can understand up. how yeah, you feel. I know. Oh, and I can understand how you felt like this heart. Cause you, you are very at the mercy of what is needed or what is wanted. But I think there's yep. one thing that's always been undeniable is that's your talent. And I think that's why the fans, when you say they pulled for you in that moment, but they still have pulled for you. And that's why they're so excited right now. Right. Because they know how good you are and we know. Yeah, how good I, you are. Yeah. I, I, and it's, uh, and it's been, uh, it's wild because so many ways, uh, you can find negativity in it. And I just, I had, I've been the luckiest guy in the world. I had almost 20 years at a company where so many ups when you, with the downs, I, everybody has the downs, but man, to have the ups and moments that I had, I, I, everyone goes, Oh, you got screwed around. You're like, aren't you mad? Like, dude, I am the luckiest guy in the world. I'm so happy. And now going, I could be coming, uh, get, getting out of WWE going, ah, you know, my back really hurts. My shoulders a little out. I don't know if I can really like, no, no, no. I feel like I'm 25 years old and I'm looking yeah. forward to it so much that that last conversation that when Mark asked me a question, I'm just like, yeah, and I'm going to fight this guy. I'm going to fight him with this. Like it gets you so excited. <laughs> One, because I've been sitting around not wrestling, which is killing me. But it's it's really a chance to go, hey, for the 1% of you who can't stand me, I'm going to show you that I'm good in a different way of this wrestling. So you got to have to learn to be mad about my haircut or something. <laughs> so 
So, Nick, I could ask you a question about the past or I can ask you one about the future. I'm going to go with the future on this one. Is there one guy in New Japan that you have now seen right in front of your own eyes? Or is there one guy in another company that you go, him? He's the guy I can make magic with and a million dollars with. Um, I've been trying to look at that very closely for the last few months um, and watching, especially when I was in Japan a few days ago, watch, there was a couple of tag teams there that I was impressed with also. But uh, I, I, I watched, I've seen Osprey wrestle before. I've seen Ambrose wrestle before, Moxley. And I had not seen Finley. And I go, man, everyone to me seems like a young kid. Seems like uh, they're going after it. And I heard he's been there uh, back and forth in Japan it's eight, nine years. And I and I go, I don't know what his work is like. Can this guy go? Can he do a thing? And I got to sit front row and watch a story play out with him and his partners, with the match, with uh, eight, um, teaming up in the match. And I went, this is a young guy who can go, who has the potential, who is a champion at the moment. And I really think there could be something there. I don't know. There's something missing at the moment, I think. But he is, I didn't know what the work was going to be like. And I went, all right, he can go. He knows when to make things happen. He can beat the hell out of somebody if he has to. He knows when to be out of place and out of mind when something else. I go, there's something there. And I go, there's a little bit of an attitude there too, which I really, really appreciate. Especially in the old days, they used to tell us, go out there and step on some toes. And then I'd come back to grill and they go, whoa, not those toes. And uh, with this, <laughs> you get to see, oh, this kid's trying to make something happen. Man, I want to smack the look off of his face. And uh, and it's not just there. Like I said, I've been watching forever. And uh, I'm just, um, when it comes to younger guys or whether they're younger or not, I even saw, I watched a little bit of, TNA and I see Moose moving around and I go, what does this guy play football? This he can do this. I'm like, man, why don't why is that not a household name? And then I watch a little bit of WWE and I'm watching NXT and I go, Oh, I remember seeing this kid when I was there for my six weeks, working hard. Oh, he's standing out like this. And you go, man, and I uh was very fortunate uh to work with Steiner. And I go, that was one of the few kids that I was already in the ring with. And I went, man, this is going to be fun when they pull the trigger with this guy. And that is coming from a bitter guy who walks in like, uh, who's not who's here to take my spot? Like, oh, this guy. And I loved when I got uh, just a few minutes in there with Steiner before we got to our story, before we got to the wrestling. And I go, I love where this kid's head at, his head is at. And I want to work with him so he can make a bunch of money. And you don't see that with a ton of people, but I was, uh, very fortunate to see several uh, this weekend that I went, man, there is some money there and they're already making money. But I just, to me, an outsider going, man, I can do something with this person here. It's, it's beautiful. Dolph, I've never seen Nick. I've never seen you have a bad match in your opinion. Have you ever had a bad match? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Bullshit. I don't believe yeah. you. I don't <laughs> believe you. I bet, I bet you Hornswoggle was You've involved. You've never had a bad match. <laughs> No, no, it's uh, I, I appreciate that very much. And, it's it's not it, smoke blowing either. It's yeah. legitimate. I wouldn't blow smoke up your ass. You know that. I, I believe that very much. Uh, but but it's, you tell me, tell me, a, give me a bad match. I don't want to see that. Give me oh, an example man. of a bad match. I'm not asking you to throw anybody under the bus. Just tell me yeah, about yeah. the time you had a, a match where things didn't go so well. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I wouldn't even say, because uh, uh, there's fun ones like, oh, not fun ones or somebody gets hurt, but something weird happens or you're, a crazy moment happens and you have to work around it. I, I, I thrive on that. I wouldn't count that. I'd be like, Oh, I made something happen improv style here because this person's shoulder blew out four minutes into a 22 minute pay-per-view match. And then there's, there's different ways, but there are, man, there are some matches to where, and one it's when I go back and look a few years later, like, Oh my God, I look like I'm an amateur, but you know that you're just like, Oh, I needed to learn that I needed to lay down and stay out of the way there for a second. Okay. I got it. But then there are some matches where, well, you know what? You know what's a really fun one? I just remembered uh, me and another person that is on the Zoom call. We're in a multi-man match, if you can imagine. 
and things didn't go exactly how they should have. And I believe I'm, I'm really bad. At, I think Wade Barrett threw me into Mark Henry's pod at the elimination chamber. And I went and it exploded the door. And we were, I think we were even in Texas too, to make it even a bigger deal for Mark and Mark is standing there and they, <laughs> and he is not supposed to come out for three more people. Uh, so he, they throw me, uh, I think Wade throws me and it breaks. It's not supposed to, it wasn't a plant spot. And I'm laying there with like broken plastic on the ground. And I just hear the crowds come up and just start rumbling for Mark. And I go, Oh my God, he's not supposed to be out here for 20 more minutes. And I'm like, what the hell are we going to do? And I'm like, don't come out, don't come out. And you can't hear me over the, over the roar of the crowd. Who's chanting for Mark to get in the ring. And then I just, I'm laying on the ground and I just see a boot go past me and I go, Oh no, what are we going to do? And uh, we had the craziest improv on the fly, 15 minute match with six guys that uh, that is some crazy ass shit. Um, I got to a point where I'm trying to call a match on the fly for six different people where you can't talk to them and the camera has to be on you at all times. So I got to a point to where I, I think I told, man, it's not Ryback. Mate, is Ryback in this match? I'm really bad. Anyway, I told Ryback, take everybody's head off put me up in a suplex. He's holding me up in a suplex. And I tell the referee to come over. He's, I go, hold me in a stalling suplex. I, I call a spot to tell, tell this guy to do this, tell this guy to do this, and tell this guy to stay the fuck down. All right, give me the suplex. Boom, puts me down. Somebody else, Mark, clean house, and then we're all gonna beat, we're all gonna beat you up, but you stay down. Okay, great. Somebody else, and I think I either get to another Ryback stalling suplex or some other thing where I go, okay, after eight minutes, we now all have our orders. There's no way this is going to be great, but I think we can improv the rest of this match and make it all go down. And that was some of the most exciting 12 minutes of my life in a terrible, terrible match. But, uh, but it also like, it was funny because you never know what's going to happen, man. And you got to be ready to go. So your worst match ever involved Mark Henry. (laughs) Wow. And uh, he's not the only one that had one. <laughs> <laughs> I think the worst part about I think the worst part about it was that Ryback one. Um, <laughs> How but, dare you be Smirch Ryback's name? <laughs> but but Duff, does it get wrong to the point? Show, like it, <laughs> but Duff, you're on but the Duff, wrong program. <laughs> does it get to that point though? Like if that was anybody else, there'd be pats on the back and like way to goes. But because that's you, it's like they almost expect that from you because you're uh, so damn good. Uh, a little, it was a little bit of both. It, 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 yeah, I go, uh, and, and, uh, and there's no world where I'm taking all the credit here. I'm just telling you my experience for the, the, a couple of minutes in there. We all worked together as a team and had to relay messages to each other and run through the ref, all these different things. I'm just telling you my aspect of it. But it was, you got to the back and uh, they're like, hey, thanks. Thanks for putting that together or, or making it all work out. And uh, Mark was really great because Mark was like, hey, that some, well, that all hell went loose and, and we made that all work. And thanks for, you know, not being, <laughs> not ruining the match. And I was in like, yeah, hey, absolutely. Yes, sir. But uh, it, it is in the, even in that match where there's so many moving parts, it was like, yeah, that's why you're in the match. And you go, I'm not someone who needs the pat on the back. Um, and I think I got so used to not getting the pat on the back for 20 years that you go, oh, that's why I'm Ozzy Smith. That's why I'm here. Okay. Okay. I okay, got it. You know. Well, Nick, I uh, appreciate the time. I know we went long. Uh, thank you for everything. Again, looking forward to what you do in New Japan. Looking forward to what you do in Puerto Rico with the WWC as well. I mean, this is such a great opportunity for you and a great time for you. So can't wait to see what the next step is going to bring in your career. And just I'm, announced uh, in Australia. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, James. Big, you're going worldwide, bro. Uh, oh, yeah, is that why uh, it's a it's, world tour T-shirt today? You're well, going actually, with the world tour. Crap is crap world crap tour. Is you, crap you ninety nine with a gallon. You WCW. I think that's the show that I, I went to watch that you were on, and you wouldn't sign my autograph. So, anyway, I wow. forget about that, but that's not important. You're James. still holding on to that. I'm just, just <laughs> asking why you were drinking a gallon of cranberry juice. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, well, I'll make it really quick. Uh, thank you for that. But uh, Vicky um, snubbed me as a fan, my very first show that I went to as a fan to watch a Cleveland All Pro Wrestling, and she <laughs> was like, "Oh, I don't have time for your autograph or something like that." And then I did not. Like, she flipped her hair and walked away. Anyway, <laughs> you hair flipped uh, him. 
some, wow. some people just, he some remembers people this a whole different way. I guess some people are just better than others or think they are. Wow. And, that's fine. and then I met uh, him at OVW, wow. and we've been <laughs> friends ever since. No, I love Mickey. I'm just joking. Oh, that didn't really happen, but I did go to a show, and she was there, and I did not get an autograph. I'll just leave it at that. Um, but <laughs> I blew him off. Uh, I, did, I want to do a, a real tiny thing. Uh, my brother and I were on this <laughs> mini zombie film that Maggie Levin directed, and it was the funnest, coolest thing we ever did, trying to make an action hero zombie movie about me going to start wrestling around the world. And uh, I am so proud of everybody worked so hard on it. And uh, we're releasing it on um, Instagram today, the full movie. And I just full movie. It's, oh. it's four minutes it is a mini short, but like it, man, it was uh, so fun. and so cool. And I just wanted to go, Hey, not only am I going to bounce around the world and go try to steal the show, do everything I've been doing my whole life. There's this badass movie that we just made together just to let everybody know let alone whatever else is coming soon so I, i'm looking forward to it so much and most importantly the browns on on saturday i'm trying to get tickets to go see them uh wild card game see him beat up the texans so. just walk wow. up so, you don't just, have the money just, yeah, just let them know you don't <laughs> yeah call just walk them. up to the loading dock and tell them who you are i mean I nobody will. else like, is trying I to go to that Mickey game James. so i'll flip my hair and they'll <laughs> let me walk in the door wait a second wait a second in Nick, any comedy uh, shows coming up uh, so my brother and I are working on a, another mini tour. Like every couple of months, we'll put together a couple of different shows. We just, uh, a, a company just asked to like start making them for us. So we're picking up some cities, uh, before Christmas, we did Chicago, LA. So we'll bounce around where there's like an AEW pay-per-view or a WWE one. But, uh, I wanted to take a few months to, for the first time, I like just focus on wrestling. I, I want to be in that shape that you can't get in unless you're wrestling in. And I haven't been yeah. wrestling, wrestling. Uh, for a couple of months. So I, I'm focused on that for six, seven months, and then I can relax here a day or two. Well, for Nick, sure. Um, I'm sure our boss, big boss man, Eddie Brasilli, can get you those tickets for the Browns game. Ooh, gonna, well, I'm going to start working on that right now as soon as this show is over. But, Nick, thank you so much for the time. We truly appreciate it. And like I said, can't wait to see what's next because there's a lot on the table here. So thank you so much for the time, Nick. There's a lot coming. Thank you guys so much. I uh, appreciate your show and what you guys do for pro for professional wrestling. Uh, we all even though it. he called me a mark. Uh, I, I was going to say an show. effing mark, but like no, I didn't know the rules about swearing. But now I know. Uh, now you could say fuck shit, swearing. whatever you want, Nick. Yeah. You have car. You have car blanche on this. If show, you Nick. work blue, you there's get there's a couple of words you can't say. <laughs> I've been reprimanded for saying them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's always got to be one guy that crosses the line, and it's always Mark Henry. All right. We'll react. <laughs> Bully, please, what's your scenario for Rumble, Elimination Chamber, WrestleMania 40, and then after WrestleMania 40 for the WWE? All right. Forgive me for going a little slow here because I don't want to screw this up, and there's a lot of little points to this. I, I got it right in the shower. I got it right on the car ride. Hopefully I don't botch it now, but I've botched before. Whatever. The scenario is for the best interest of Cody. The scenario also creates, the, in my eyes, the most excitement, unpredictability, biggest match we could possibly have at WrestleMania, but more importantly, coming out of WrestleMania. So now, here we go. We get to the Rumble. Let's take Seth and Punk out of these equations because I think we're getting Seth and Punk. Let's leave them alone. We get the four-way. A lot of people this morning, I believe, with this four-way are going, ah, Randy, Randy, Randy. What if they leave the championship on Roman? Once again, they've been pissing the world off with keeping that championship on Roman. Let's keep it going. Roman goes over at the Rumble. Cody wins the Rumble. Now we get to Elimination Chamber. Rock versus Roman at Elimination Chamber. Rock wins. Rock is your universal champion. As of that moment, it's Cody and Rock at WrestleMania. The Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania 
Cody cuts a promo on The Rock. The SmackDown after Elimination Chamber. Roman and Rock are face to face. With Roman invoking his 30 day clause immediately, or his rematch clause, his rematch clause immediately. So Roman now wants his shot at WrestleMania against Rocky. Cody comes out. Don't forget about me. I won the Rumble. Aldis comes out. Somehow, Aldis, they try to make the match. Maybe this is where you introduce Hunter as the, you know, the the, the ruler, you know, the, the big head, the big GM. The match becomes Cody versus Roman versus The Rock at WrestleMania. Cody pins The Rock. Coming out of WrestleMania, you now have two opponents for Cody Rhodes that he did not defeat. He never beat Randy. He never beat Roman. You have two quality opponents, main event opponents for Cody coming out of Mania. I think I'm done. All right. So let wow. me try to let me try to go over this and simplify wow. it a little bit. And tell me if if anywhere I'm. Are you going to change it? I'm not changing. No, no, no. I'm changing. No, I'm just going to repeat what what Bully said, okay. and see if I got it right. Because I'm sure the nation right now their head is spinning. So we we go in. You said that Roman retains in the Fatal Four Way at the Royal Rumble. Cody wins the Royal Rumble. We have Rock versus Roman at Elimination Chamber with The Rock winning. So now The Rock is your new undisputed WWE Universal Champion. Now Roman People Street sends is... shockwaves throughout yes. the wrestling business. And hey, listen, we saw we saw uh, Goldberg beat Brock, right? So in 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 record fashion. So stranger things have happened. Now at that point, now Roman streak is done. Roman's you know the now Taker streak is done. Yeah, well, I mean, just but but just Roman as far as his like the length of his title run, that's over. So there's no more no more of that once we get past Elimination Chamber. Now immediately after Elimination Chamber, Roman says, "I want you at WrestleMania. I want a rematch. I've I've, I've been your longest running uh, world champion in modern history." You have to go all the way back to Hulk Hogan. And you could bring but, up the wonky contract again. Remember when Triple H said, oh, Roman did this special contract where he can defend the championship whenever he wanted. That's how they got around his limited amount of time and limited amount of title defenses. So now you could say, one of the things in the contract, there was a hard clause in there, that if Roman were to lose, he gets the immediate first rematch. Yeah, and that uh, you could bring that up, like you said. Triple H comes out, explains all of that. But then Cody comes out and says, "Wait, I won the Royal Rumble. I declare that I want to go after this undisputed WWE Universal Championship now that I've won the Royal Rumble." Right. So that brings up the 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 three way: Cody, Rock, and Roman for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Right. Yes. I'm right so far. Now, Rock is going to lose. Because it doesn't matter. Rock has given you the match at WrestleMania. He's given you a little bit of a run here. Rock is going away. We knew he would. He's gone. But like in Bully's scenario, now Cody has never beat Randy Orton. Cody has never beat Roman Reigns. Now you have two storylines. But he pinned The Rock. And now, right, let's say they do that scene with all the kids coming in the ring a la... Rocky Balboa or Bob Backlund or Daniel Bryan, everybody's celebrating, everybody's celebrating. And now the real passing of the torch S scenario, the real rub of Rock endorsing Cody and raising his hand at WrestleMania. Now and then and then in your scenario, you've built up the Rock because the Rock beat Roman Reigns. But now you have two stories that are gonna take you for the next calendar year. The Monday night after WrestleMania, 
when Cody comes out first or whenever Cody comes out, ladies and gentlemen, your new WWE Universal Champion, and he'll be coming out in Philadelphia, obviously. Boom. Cody Rhodes. Fanfare, Ooh. pomp, circuit. You think they're going to be booing him? They're going to boo the shit out of Cody. Okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say they're not. Uh, they're let's so let's just say they're with That's him. That's why they Universal. lost to the Giants last night. <laughs> <laughs> Cody Rhodes, who's the first person to congratulate him? Randy Orton, his partner in legacy back in the day, his friend, his mentor. Remember the tweet that Cody retweeted. My tweet that Cody retweeted about how you know master verse apprentice. One more time, let's run it back. So here comes Randy for the congratulations, yada, 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 rah, 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 sis, boom, bye. Your sister's ass, RKO. Boom. Mm. Now you're off to the races with Randy and Cody. And that can last as long as long as you want because there's a personal story there. Cody eventually overcomes Randy. And then all of a sudden, one day, the big dog's music hits. Reminder, Cody, you never beat me. You pinned The Rock, not me. And on SmackDown, you could have Roman dealing with the bloodline and everything and all the, the, the Solo or Jimmy and Jey Uso. Like, you could still have that bloodline story going and doing it on SmackDown, and then and eventually Roman will get back into the championship fold. So I'm not saying they're going to do this scenario. In no way, shape, or form will I come on on this show and go, and, this is it. I figured it out. I'm giving an alternative idea that I think creates some confusion going in, makes The Rock your champion, which is complete shock and awe. The three-way, now you know I'm not a big fan of three-ways in these very meaningful world heavyweight championship matches, but the WWE has this weird history, as one of the callers reminded us last week, of... WrestleMania 20, the main event was a three-way. WrestleMania 30, the main event was a three-way. This is 40. I mean, that's a pretty big three-way. Rock, Roman, Cody. 